Hey guys, welcome back to the Fantasy Waiver Wire. Here are the Week 17 Waiver Wire ads. We're going to start off the block with Tua, and no, I can't say his last name properly, or at least not consistently, but the guy's consistently QB 12 to 15 when he's healthy, and that's big. This is being recorded Sunday night, released Monday morning, so Tua could get injured. In that case, don't go grab him. If he does play well, I'm going to be looking for him on our waiver wire because he's available in 45% of leagues. That's huge. The Titans are going to be getting theirs. We know this. Whether they're running the ball or throwing the ball, they're going to be scoring. They're going to be getting yards, which means Tua should be throwing the ball 35 plus times. He's got Waddle. He's got Parker. He's got Kasiki. He's even got Duke Johnson catching the ball all of a sudden. We like this matchup. He's actually got the fifth easiest matchup for quarterback. So Tua is a guy we want to be looking for. Down the stretch, I mean, this is the fantasy playoffs here. This could be your final. At nine, I'm going Josh Palmer. And this is just an opportunity play because if Keenan Allen or Mike Williams sits out, Josh Palmer is awesome when he starts. He had six targets, five catches, 43 yards, and a touchdown. And in week 14, when he drew the start, he had like 85% of the snaps. He had seven targets for five catches, 66 yards, and another touchdown. So this guy just needs to be on the field because when he's cooking, the guy is on fire. Eight, another charger. I'm going Justin Jackson. And again, we're speculating on health. We are not certain that Austin Eckler is going to be playing this week. He didn't play in week 16, and we were expecting him to crack the lineup last second. Just didn't happen. Super annoying. Anyway, Jackson took over. He had 19 touches, good for 162 yards and two scores. So he is the bell cow when Austin Eckler isn't in. Even if Eckler is in, Jackson played well enough to probably get some of the role. Grab Jackson if you have the waiver claim. Here's a rookie who's played once since week 11. That one game was this week where he had nine targets, four catches, but only 28 yards. Do you know who we're talking about? It's Kadarius Tony. In week 11, he had 12 targets, seven catches, and 40 yards. So the guy is getting the volume. We just need to make sure that he's on the field. Or, I don't know, maybe playing with his starting quarterback. Mike Lennon is not exactly Daniel Jones. Daniel Jones could be a lot better, but he's a hell of a lot better than Mike Lennon. If we get Daniel Jones, I would love firing up Kadarius Tony in the flex because the Chicago defense does not scare me one bit. Another COVID speculation play, Isaiah McKenzie, who had 12 targets. Before this game, the guy only had 10 targets to his name this season. That's unreal. He had more catches this game than he had targets all season leading up to Week 16. He finished this week with 11 catches, good for 125 yards and a touchdown. Now, Cole Beasley was out. Gabe Davis was out. So that means Isaiah McKenzie was the number three receiver. There's speculation that after this game, McKenzie jumped Gabe Davis in the pecking order. So if Manny Sanders or Stephon Diggs is out in week 17, Isaiah McKenzie would take over that wide receiver three role, which led to 12 targets. Unless something goes right, he's probably a non-factor, but let's speculate on a what if. This is week 17. Our last receiver on this list is KJ Osborne, who had seven targets, 68 yards, and a touchdown. Though Thielen started, Thielen left early. When Thielen isn't playing, Osborne is balling out, and I'm not so sure that Thielen's going to be playing in Week 17 because the Vikings aren't making the playoffs. So why not rest him? He's one of the highlights on your offense. Just let the guy take a break. And here's where we're going to start rolling with four consecutive running backs. At number four, I want Boston Scott because Miles Sanders left early again, and Jordan Howard, he left with a stinger. So Boston Scott was healthy. They didn't really care about Kenny Gamewell at all. And Jordan Howard has no hands. Boston Scott had 12 rushes, good for 41 yards. And like I said, Jordan Howard probably hasn't caught a ball since 2019. This will lead to a lot of passing down work for Boston Scott, which means he's at least the third down back. And I'm expecting him to be running the ball a little bit because the guy had 12 carries. Washington isn't the ideal matchup, but that means that there could be more opportunity for Boston Scott through the air. At three, pick your poison. Are you going Daryl Williams or Derek Gold? The reason I'm saying these guys is because CDH left early, and I'm not expecting him back to play in Week 17 or 18. Now, Daryl Williams is probably going to get the start because he's been there longer. He played a big pivotal role in their Super Bowl run. Daryl Williams is a guy. He had 14 touches, good for 85 yards, and you're probably laughing, thinking like, why wouldn't we be going Williams? Well, because Derek Gore had 15 touches, good for 104 yards. Like I said, it's a bit of a coin flip, but... Darrell Williams knows the system better than Derek Gore. Derek Gore had an opportunity, but they led back to Darrell Williams and eventually to CEH. So maybe Derek Gore relinquished that role. I'm going after Williams, but there's no shame in going after Gore. And at two, a guy who has a wicked game probably once or twice every single season, you can count on it. It's not always with the same team, though. This is Rex Burkett, who had 22 rushes for 149 yards and not one, but two touchdowns. David Johnson did not play with a quad injury, so Rex Burkhead 
took the charge, and beat the Chargers. See what I did? Anyway, he had big efforts of 25 and 36 yards. His two touchdowns were from the goal line and from 15 yards out. He looked a lot more explosive than he has earlier in the season because something like a third of his runs have gone for one or less yards leading up to today. That's quite the blemish, but this is quite the bright spot. And our number one waiver ad is Dare Ekumbawale, who had 19 touches for 72 yards and a touchdown after James Robinson, who just can't get a break this season, tore his Achilles, obviously done for the rest of the season. We're going to see how James Robinson looks going into next season because, let's not forget, he's got Travis Etienne, you know, raring to go. Goomba Wale will get all of the rushing down work. It's not going to be Carlos Hyde. He's still on the IR. Obviously, James Robinson's on the IR. And we just mentioned that Travis Etienne is also on the IR. So it's going to be a Goomba Wale. And for those who forgot, he used to be the hands back in Tampa Bay three years ago. So he's going to be playing all three downs. Go grab a Goomba Wale. I wouldn't be starting any of these guys unless I absolutely have to. But this is week 17, so we might be wanting to play defense. If we get a guy on our team, even if it's on our bench, it means that somebody can't be starting him against us. Jacksonville is going to be playing for pride, and so should we. This is week 17. Thank you so much for listening, guys. Please like, comment, subscribe to our YouTube channel at Fantasy Waiver Wire. Follow us wherever you get your podcasts, and follow us on Instagram at Fantasy Waiver Wire. Thanks, and good luck in your championship matchups.